Welcome to Route 664, the road to human kindness, and I'm your host and a guide along this road using the planning and the prospering and power of 664. Those are numbers that you haven't heard much about, but we hope that they'll be ingrained in your psyche as much as 401ks or 529 or 1031. All sections of the tax code all do certain things for you when you use them properly. And uh, this is just one more number that will help you. If you are in a situation where you've got a capital gains tax on a transaction and you want to avoid that capital gains tax, uh, or you want to eliminate some estate tax, you want to reduce your income tax, you can do that using 664 under certain circumstances and in certain ways. Uh, there are two other sections that are similar to it. We call all three the social security sections of the tax code, very similar to social security because it is like Social Security. The government created this in 1969 so that you could increase your income for retirement, reduce your taxes, and also do something good for the community when you pass. And that was the bargain that they made in 1969 with Section 664. It's a part of um, managing your wealth, making sure that you can increase your wealth and keep it as powerful as you can by reducing the amount of tax that you pay. But wealth management is very important. My guest today, is Andrew Van Elston, and he is a an MBA and a financial guru, and would like to uh, would like to interview today about how wealth management is done. What is the meaning of wealth management? It's a term that's floated around a lot. It's used quite a bit in advertising, but what is it really? Yeah, thank you so much for having me today. So, wealth management to me, and finance in general, finance to me is a lot like religion. There's something out there for everyone. As long as it's something that is in al alignment with your goals and your philosophies in life, then it's what works best for you. So my philosophy on wealth management is something that anything that finance or ca cash or money or assets touch, I want to have a positive impact in my client's life in those regards. So it's from investment management, budgeting, family governance, tax planning, benefits with either an employer or for employees if you own a company. Mm -hmm. uh, but anything that can have a possible financial implication on your life is a conversation that I'm having with my clients. It's not so necessarily that, something that we're going to be touching on. Mm -hmm. And we'll get into this a little bit, I feel, but it's not something that we're going to be touching on every single topic every single year. Mm -hmm. But it is going through a thorough diagnostic checklist and making sure that we're at least covering our bases each and every year on every topic. Okay. You follow a you have some sort of a, a order of questioning or some sort of a systematic way of uh, managing wealth. Yeah, absolutely. So it's something where during the onboarding process with every client, uh, we're going to do a thorough review of everything. So we're going to review any current investment holdings that they have, making sure that they're not overexposed in any specific asset class, that they're well diversified. Uh, and really maximizing towards their risk tolerance in that capacity. We're going to do a thorough review of previous tax statements, making sure that if there's any opportunity as far as, you know, squeezing out any extra juice from any effective tax rate that we have available, that we are, we're looking at their entire family. We're looking at their goals and making sure that we're sp specifically creating this plan to help them achieve the goals that they see both in the now, 10 years from now, and further down the road into the future as well, and making sure that we're building out a roadmap for that accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, so, it's making sure that we open up the correct accounts for them along the way as well. So what are the hazards to their wealth? The hazards. The hazards are, there's a few. In the immediate term, it's not putting the money to work in proper uses and having increased tax liabilities in that capacity. It's not having the proper wills or trust in place to making sure that that money is going to be put to its intended purpose throughout the course of your life and beyond. And then, as I mentioned earlier, one thing that is specifically important with higher income and higher net worth individuals is family mm -hmm. governance. It's putting into a system in place where once you're passing, any assets that you're passing on to future generations or other individuals, it doesn't become a burden to them. They're not left wondering what this money was used for if you do have the trust in place, but lack the family governance, mm -hmm. it's something where oftentimes they can feel that they are restrained in what they can do with those funds. So uh, you've been talking about uh, what we, uh, we define some financial hazards. We define them as dying too soon. 
Mm -hmm. which is what you're kind of talking about right now um, in the sense that people need to be prepared to die. Uh, Correct. They need to have their documents in order and uh, and the financial what and the financial well being their family in order. So you deal mostly in life insurance, or are you dealing in uh, in other areas of insurance? It's something that I'll touch on with my clients. Mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure that they're properly protected in those areas. We want to make sure that at a, a bare minimum, and again, this can range dramatically depending on what stage they are in life when I meet them. Um, but at a bare minimum, we want to make sure that any liabilities that are going to in introduce an additional burden to their family are well taken care of. But then later in life, making sure that insurance isn't going to put an emotional burden on their family should life end too soon or something take a turn for the worse. Yeah, dying too soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Where are you located, Andrew? I'm located just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. Are you are you a uh, are you a registered investment advisor on your own or are you an M how do you operate as well? So I'm, I am associated with an independent RIA registered investment advisor. Our firm is based out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, the practice that I'm running out of North Carolina is kind of a multifamily office setup that is tucked in under the firm. Okay, you like what you do? I love it. it it's yeah. something that this. In, in particular, talking around death and dying too soon and the family governance, the thing that really drew me to this is my grandparents on both my maternal and paternal side. They were American working class and doing what they were told to do their entire life, which is work hard, save more than you earn, and everything else will fall into the place. And for the most part, it did. They were able to do a lot in their life. But then when it came to the end of life, not having the proper estate documents in order not having a plan in place, things started to unravel. And we we still have great memories. I still have great memories of my grandparents and everything that went on. But it was a shame to see that through probate and through just the end of life experience, how much of a drag that can be on the family as a whole, not just even obviously, it's horrible for the person that's dying. And yeah, no, that's well that's the hazard i mean uh you 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 hit on you hit the nail on the head people um and unfortunately most people don't know what they need to do or how to do it and it's not that complicated but they need a road they need a guide on that road mm -hmm. and andrew van alston is one of those guides um the road to human kindness we call also your road to confidence we'd like to people to have confidence in what they're doing we'll be right back our protagonist, Jack, was a 65-year-old retiree who'd always been known for his offbeat sense of humor and love for numbers. He'd been searching for a way to support his community while securing his retirement income. One day, while browsing through the depths of the internet, Jack stumbled upon an article about Tax Code 664 and its potential benefits for charitable planning. Hello, welcome to today's edition of Route 664, the road to you and kindness. Curious and excited, Jack decided to delve further into this mysterious code he spent hours poring over tax law books and articles until he became a self-proclaimed expert on the subject. He'd tell his friends, who needs a doku when you've got tax codes to crack? Armed with his newfound knowledge, Jack approached his financial advisor, Martha, and shared his idea of utilizing tax code 664 to set up a charitable trust. He was convinced that this strategy would benefit not only his retirement, but also his beloved community, particularly the revitalization of the local park. With a twinkle in her eye, Martha acknowledged Jack's enthusiasm and praised his resourcefulness. Together, they devised a plan to establish a charitable trust that provided Jack with a stable retirement income and directed the remaining funds towards renovating the park. Word of Jack's innovative approach spread like wildfire, inspiring others in the community to explore the potential of Tax Code 664. Soon, more and more people began implementing charitable planning strategies to support various community projects, ranging from building a new animal shelter to establishing a local art center. As Jack took his daily strolls through the newly renovated park, he couldn't help but smile. His Tax Code 664 adventure had not only secured his retirement, but also transformed the community in more ways than he could have ever imagined. With a wink and a grin, Jack would often say, looks like the joke's on boring retirement plans. <laughs> Who knew tax codes could be so much fun? Who? Remember, your financial journey can be both impactful and entertaining when you explore the potential of charitable planning with Tax Code 664. Visit EndowAmerica.com 
With the right knowledge and guidance, anyone can turn their dreams into a reality. Leave a lasting legacy that benefits generations to come. EndowAmerica.com Plan. Prosper. Pass on. The power of 664. We're back. My guest is Andrew Van Alsen, and he's in, in outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. And he's an MBA and practices wealth management. So do you do you touch on some of the other hazards at all, like disability or property and casualty hazards? Or we you're, do. You're, you're, um, you're I, primarily in the living too long and dying too soon area. No, we touch on all aspects. Again, it's not necessarily something that I do in-house, specifically on the property and casualty side, but it is something that I do a thorough review for every client as well. It's amazing how many people, how many people are overinsured in both of those capacities. You know, this day and age, especially if you're if you look at a lot of what the Fed's looking at right now as far as the inflation rate goes, where insurance is kind of leading the pack that's holding inflation high in their eyes. Um, it's something where if there's an opportunity for people to save a little bit on premium, it's amazing how many people are overinsured from having too low of a deductible. So it is something that I do a thorough review on that side for them. Um, mm -hmm. Disability is the same thing. You know, a lot of people that are solopreneurs or small business owners, it might be a single income stream household, especially when I'm finding them earlier in their career stage. And it's something where if we we need to take the steps to make sure that we're protecting, should there be an injury Obviously, loss of life is burdensome to the entire family, but mm. having someone that's still alive and having no income as well can be as great, if not even greater, yeah. of a burden to the family. Yeah, Hebner said it's uh, disability is the same as death, except there's difference six feet aside. So you know uh, the 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 issue of pro the properly planning for retirement is, of course, what's on most people's minds these days. The way things are with inflation, as rampant as it is, and uh, people not having confidence, maybe in the market or whatever, they what are people looking to to actually create a retirement account for themselves? How do they how are they going about doing it? That answer depends for everyone and what their goals are. Some people want to retire as early as possible and downscale their life as soon as possible, and just. Live comfortably. Well, you can you can stop working at any time. The question is, can you yeah. eat? You yeah. know. So, uh, yeah. So, I think for most individuals, I, I think that they just want to know that they're not left floating adrift in an ocean. They want to know that they're headed in the in a path that they want to be headed. If that's something that I, I think a lot of people, particularly in older clients, the closer they get to retirement, they become much more risk adverse. But the risk that they're looking at is the volatility in the market and not necessarily the loss of purchasing power. Mm -hmm. I think that that's something that is highly under looked at. The loss of purchasing power because of inflation, you mean? Correct. So Correct. in other words, they're sitting in with a fixed income, a fixed dollar amount, and there's no room for growth. They put themselves in jeopardy. Is that basically what you're saying? Basically, yes. They, 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 the, the rate of return that they're getting on their cash assets is losing value because it's less than the rate of inflation or very close to- Well, right now, it's pretty tough to overcome that. It is. Yeah. Um, I mean, fortunately, with the interest rates getting up as high as they had on treasuries, it's something where you can at least combat it somewhat, mm -hmm. but that's a very short-term fix to mm -hmm. a much more long-term psychological problem. Okay. My guest is Andrew Van Alston, and I um, appreciate your time this morning on the Route, to, route 664, the Road to Human Kindness. Uh, we are creating endowment engineers. I don't know if you've ever heard the term, but the Endowment Engineering Society has been created where we want to educate the advisors and the public about the use of 664. And so well, the best people to do that, we think, are endowment engineers who can endow an endowment for the individual so they can use that for the retirement and then how they're going to pass it into the community when they pass. We call it social security uh, because it's very much like social security in the sense that you pay in over a period of time and hopes to get an income in the future. Thing is with social security, when you put in the money all those years and you end up reaching retirement age in one day and you don't have a family and you pass away mm -hmm. into the ether goes the, goes all that money. And so we uh, think it's better. I think it's better. Uh, that people were able to accumulate all that money, have a retirement income, probably much better than it would be for Social Security anyway, for a lot of reasons, 
and then pass that into the community where they want it to go. So listen in on what we're doing and uh, maybe uh, take part in what we're doing. We have a significant website at uh, endowamerica.com, endowamerica.com. And uh, we hope that you'll uh, be a guest on that. We, I know you'll be on the radio show that we uh, that we do, so you'll be able to get the replays of what we're doing. And we hope you become a, a part of what we're doing. So thanks again for joining us this morning, Andrew. Appreciate it. My absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, folks, it's Charity here. Philanthropy meets financial gains in the inspiring space of donor advised funds. Tax Code 664 provides a perfect opportunity to both reduce taxable income and make charitable contributions through real estate donations. For donors, liquidating difficult to sell property while providing valuable assistance to nonprofits is made easier using this tax code. Heirs can benefit as well. So whether you're trying to save money or help your favorite organization aid its mission statement, look no further than giving creatively under Tax Code 664 for beneficial results all around. And uh, that uh, was a really interesting interview with uh, a financial planner that is concerned about inflation, concerned about how uh, the individual can get by uh, creating what they need to create for retirement purposes. And uh, it's a very, uh, very astute young man. We, uh, we hope that he'll become an endowment engineer. It's a project that we've been working on for a while. We have a society of endowment engineers, and everybody asks me the same question, what are you talking about? <laughs> so, what are you talking about? Wanda asks me that all the time. Lots of times. <laughs> exactly. So I make it up as I go along. And uh, But the endowment engineer is a very, very skilled individual. They are actually what we call MBs, AMBs. Um, and it's interesting because, like, you know what an MBA is, a Master's of Business Administration. Uh, this is a master's of business without the administration. Uh, these are folks that know how to operate financially regarding business, uh, business opportunities and also personal and family opportunities. And this is an important aspect of all, all planning, um, making it simple enough to uh, be able to operate without having all of the gobbledygook of the administration side, statistics and economics and all those things that are included in an MBA. We don't really need those to be able to operate a business. So what we're doing is we're creating endowment engineers, but they're also ambassadors. And they're ambassadors for a reason because ambassadors have um, the, the, the distinction of being credible individuals in an area of expertise and sharing that in an abundant world. That's an ambassador's role, to be an abundant sharer. So uh, what, we, what we envision is ambassadors, what I envision is ambassadors who are endowment engineers, they're able to create um, a, your opportunity as a business person or an individual or family to be able to maximize your assets in a way that makes your life easier and you understand what it is to be financially planned in, or in, in order to be able to endow yourself properly and also to endow the community. This is a very long range uh, plan, but it starts with the first step. And we've created a course outline now that we uh, encourage you to consider uh, taking uh, if you are looking for a new profession. And this is a new profession and one that will be very important going forward in this country as we deal with our national debt and how we increase charitable wealth in the country. Um, in studio today, joining me today is the lovely Wanda. Hello. Uh, hello. And uh, Wanda and I have been working on the uh, school aspect of this yes. for a while. The and maybe uh, you want to talk certification a bit about program. The certification program. Well, we're working on the certification program, which will be online, and you will conduct those courses and the yeah. modules. And so it's all video, and you can do it at your on your schedule, your own time frame. But we're still creating it, and hopefully it'll be available beginning the be first week in June, maybe? Well, part of it will be available. Part of it. It'll, yeah, we're yeah, doing, we'll a, open we're it doing a beta test of the first three modules, and then uh, we're going to be uh, creating the rest of the. There'll be 12 modules in all, hopefully. We're still experimenting because we need there's a lot of information, and maybe we will have a multiple uh, course arrangement where you can deal, you know, dig deeper into some of these 
more involved planning things where you want to become more specialized. But an endowment engineer will be a profession that uh, allows you to charge fees for your services because you'll be providing blueprints for people to follow and their advisors to follow. And that uh, that's monetizable. Endowamerica.com, you can find out more information about that. And uh, we'll let you know when the course opens up. And you can uh, register and join our Society of Endowment Engineers. It's going to be a nice little community that we're creating. Yeah. That National. you can all talk together and, um, you know, work out the whole blueprinting. <laughs> Yeah, the strength in numbers and uh, also multiple brains. Yes. Uh, so, uh, but I, I think the I think we've really uh, hit on something that's going to be valuable to to everybody. Um, the ambassador program is also being used in the chambers of commerce. Uh, we have uh, I have uh, I felt for a long time that the chambers of commerce are most important elements in the business community in the communities in a lot of ways because they're apolitical and they are uh, you know membership of uh, documented organizations, businesses that you can trust. And so the chambers need uh, to be able to um, help their members. And one of the ways to do that is by using the ambassador program. And uh, we've been working with the um, Miami Beach, we're going to be working with the Miami Beach Chamber of Commerce on this program. In fact, they have a golf tournament on the 31st. Oh, yes. Tell us about that, Les. Uh, <laughs> Miami Beach Country Club, Miami Beach Golf Course and Country Club. Miami hmm. Beach Golf Course. I don't know if it's a country club, uh, but it's over there on Alton Road and uh, beautiful golf course and uh, be a, uh, a shotgun start and uh, looking forward to it. We're going to have a couple of holes there. We'll be offering when prizes. Is this? Uh, next, not uh, this Friday, but next Friday. Is that a, the is 31st. There a day? Okay. 31st, <laughs> May 31st. Attach a number to that day. Yeah, May 31st. And um, I, don't, I think it may be sold out. But uh, it's a great event, and it benefits the education, uh, 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 the nonprofit education organization of the Miami Beach Chamber of Commerce. So we're looking forward to doing that, and Our we're going to be giving away. By the way, we're going to be giving away two bottles of Cristal champagne to people who get closest to the hole, and people who can use the bazooka to get to closest to the hole. That's holes Four. 17, 16, and seventeen. I'm so so um, the other thing that's happening with Chambers of Commerce is also very exciting, and that is. Uh, the Aventura Sunny Isles Beach Chamber of Commerce is now expanding mm. uh, to include West Aventura. West Aventura? Uh, yeah, West Aventura. I've never heard of this town. That's true. And uh, <laughs> we want to make sure that people hear about it. Uh, West Aventura is the west side. We have the west and we have Aventura in the middle and then Sunny Isles on the side of the beach on the, on the east. And um, I've been uh, having uh, the opportunity to meet with developers who are very important. Uh, very uh, intent on uh, developing that community. And that goes along with our uh, title, which is our actual title of the chamber is the West Aventura hyphen Aventura hyphen Sunny Isles Beach uh, oh, Chamber boy. of Commerce and Community Development. Good Lord. It's a mouthful. It um, is. It was CD. West side of what? <laughs> when you say the west side. West side west of, of Aventura. Uh, the west side of US one? Where, no, where Brightline is. Okay. West okay. side of Brightline. Right. That... West side of Brightline Station and then south and north to the county line. It looks like that's what uh, we're looking at, uh, that community development. Cool. That's what's going to be be working on. We're nice. going to have a committee of the founders uh, who are going to help uh, do that. And uh, I think it's the it most exciting thing that's happened in a long time in that area. <laughs> so well, looking forward to looking forward to, to making that a very uh, successful part of the Chamber of Commerce that we uh, that we operate. Okay. Next. High Lie. Let's talk High Lie, Les. Yes. Have you heard of High Lie, folks? Yeah. So High Lie, um, I've been playing High Lie for 60 years. What uh, is High Lie? Highlight is a Basque sport that uses a cesta, a basket, wicker, wicket. It was a wicker basket. They make them now into, they use uh, synthetics now to make them, which is interesting. Highlight is a game, uh, Hemingway described it as uh, ballet like. Mm -hmm. uh, the moves I... in Highlight are very, um, you're using all of your body, you're twisting, you're turning, you're bending, you're throwing. It's a great, great sport. And um, I attribute it to, 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 to being long, long lived, <laughs> I really do. I think it's a very important uh, aspect of my life. I play it twice a week, and uh, Wanda was filming it the other night. We had a little bit of a tournament. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna show yep. some of that on one of the shows, and, you, and we're gonna. You guys won last night. Yeah, we won. We won two That's very games. Exciting to watch. Yeah, we won two games. 
And uh, thank you uh, for that. I forgot that. I'm honest. I don't want to talk about winning. It's okay. I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll praise you. Yeah. So, um, and we also want to build the sport. Um, it's a beautiful sport. And uh, I think people who've watched it may not uh, know that they can play it. Um, we don't use the hard pelota and we don't play with as large a court. We play with a rubber ball, the smaller court. And uh, we do have cestas, and the cestas are made, as I said, they're out of synthetics now. So we don't, the biggest problem used to be finding a guy who could weave those cestas. Mm. And they had to be repaired from time to time because they break up when the ball hits them and everything. But um, anyway, it's a great game. So I want to build that game. I think that the public needs to be aware that there are ways that they can get involved in the, in the game of highlight. And certainly at amateur highlight in North Miami, where I play, uh, you're welcome to come out there. They have uh, cestas available, and you can learn how to play the game. It's extremely, extremely interesting game. Yeah. Pitbull loves high lie. Yeah, that's it's what very, I heard. That's very cool. So we're gonna we're reaching out to Pitbull. Pitbull, anyone know Pitbull? Pitbull, we'd love to talk to you about some <laughs> high lie. You and Les, maybe a uh, well. You want to hey, take them on? Yeah, take them on the court him? and uh, show you how we play rubber come ball. Come on, come the on. Rub, the rubber, the rubber ball up. high lie game. Yeah, it's really, uh, you know, if you get hit with it, it's, it hurts, but it's not gonna, <laughs> it's not gonna do the damage that it does. We don't wear helmets yeah. uh, because it's not that because you're uh, bad. Dangerous. Yeah. Asses. <laughs> yeah. Pardon me. Well, but, when you hear the crack of the ball when you play with the real ball, it sounds a lot different than this one. Yeah. Uh, but the crack is what makes you sweat the minute you walk on the court. <laughs> that, well, it, it, when I'm watching, it reminds me of lacrosse when I played lacrosse in high school. Yeah. Lacrosse and or, yeah, more lacrosse because but your arm is yeah. The stick. You're you and you're catching in a basket you and you're catching it. a ball and you're th you're throwing a ball. Yeah. So it's very much like that. But uh, I think the bass uh, they they used to play off a granite wall. It's an interesting game. The history of it is quite amazing. And Miami, of course, has been Miami who, Vice. Who started this highlight it. game with the was it the natives the. I mean, the bass and I maybe I think it was probably a weapon at some point. They they learned how they could throw something further ah. <laughs> using using a basket. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who who thought of that. You know, it's the same guy that figured out you Fantastic. know eating snails. I don't know. It's uh... <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Before we go, yeah. we gotta, let's talk books. Let's talk books. Good. Don't forget social to charity uh, the book that you must have to. Secure your fortune and your legacy. Social Security, how tax code 664 saved Gen Alpha's retirement and a Social nation. Social Security. Social Security. Social oh, my goodness. Charity. Charity. Wanda? <laughs> goodness. All right. Social Security. Got it. Got it. And this just out, my book, my new book, Dead Air. I love being an author. I love getting my thoughts out on paper and getting it out there and not getting interrupted when I'm doing it. It's just the What best. is Dead Air about? Dead Air is about... The story of my life. Dead air, what I've discovered is the silence and all the answers in the silence, and that we all need to just slow down a little bit, take some time with ourselves, go within, and figure things out. Dead air to me is that space between imagination and reality. It's where it's the space between breaths. It's when you breathe in and then breathe out. And if you take that moment in that space, mm -hmm. there's, there's juicy gold in there. Dead air. Find it. You find your own dead air. I but love that. It's also how That's I grew up. My stories from Baltimore to here. I, I don't know that you know this, but men have a box for dead air. <laughs> they call it the nothing box, you know. Where <laughs> you just shut it's a, medit it's a meditate. Yeah. Is it a switch? Yeah, it is a switch. I think, uh, <laughs> I think silence um, is one of the most powerful tools. Uh, tools and communication in a lot of ways. So when you get the silent treatment, you know that. <laughs> and the pause. Just enjoy the pause. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thought. So Great. Dead Air is available on Amazon. Both and books so are on is, Amazon. And so is Social Security. Social how, Security. Yeah, how we're going to save Generation Alpha. And we're going to teach Generation Alpha. Uh, more Generation Alpha students will be in the endowment, endowment engineering program I believe, than any other uh, category, because I think they actually understand what it's going to take to be able to make the world a better place. And also, I think that simplification, even though, you know, we have all these devices that take complicated things and turn them into something easier through AI. And I think that that's wonderful for all the complicated things. But I think we need to simplify things as well in our minds so that we can 
understand exactly what it is that we need to do and how to do it. And uh, so I think ambassadors and endowment engineers are going to help people do that, AMBs. Also pick up a book. Yes. Every now and then. They're important. These are good ones. Yep. We got to get a, a bookshelf on our website. That's endowamerica.com. If you want to hear some great music and more of these great conversations, route664.org. We'd love to see you, hear you. Come see us play golf. Les, take us out. Thanks for being with us today. That's the show.